All right, so while Mo was on vacation, he didn't sign up for this, but some old dude decided to, like, school him about his generation. He did. Uh, I, I don't know what it is about me, but when I go out for some reason, it happens often, I always find that strangers love to tell me, like, their deep, dark secrets. <laughs> and I have no idea why. I don't know if it has something to do with the fact that I'm normally quiet. When I'm out in social settings, I'm kind of to myself, just doing my thing. And somehow, some way, a conversation will always start with someone. And maybe they think I'm a vault. Maybe they think because I, was not, I don't say much that I won't say anything. But they just start telling me their secrets. And I never thought I would hear a guy actually say something like what this man said to me out loud. But he told me we were sitting there and he's in Dubai by himself, which is kind of how the conversation started. Because I thought that was interesting. I'm like, what brought you all the way to Dubai by yourself? And he tells me, well, it's a long story. So at first we don't start talking about it. We kind of just talk about life and eventually he asks me what I do for a living and I tell him. So when he finds out that I'm in radio, ironically, he wants to share his story. He's like, well, I think I got a story you may have never heard. And I'm like, I doubt it, bro. Like, I, I, you've heard it all after a few years of radio. And he's like, nah, I don't think you've heard this one. So he said, you asked me why I'm in Dubai by myself. And I said, yeah. And he said, I left my wife because she won't let me cheat on her. It's literally <laughs> what he said. she won't let me cheat on her. Okay. So, I, I, I think that's a legitimate reason to leave somebody. <laughs> yeah. True. Uh-huh. Right. So, and you wouldn't be cheating if you got the green light. Right. Correct. Right. Yeah. So... He breaks it down to me, and all of this started because I had made a joke about um, how his generation failed us as men. Because I had a shirt on that had um, happy wife, happy life crossed out, and then underneath it, it had happy spouse, happy house. Mm. And he liked my shirt. Mm -hmm. And he was like, I really like that shirt. And so I had made a joke about how, um, I'm like, yeah, that happy wife, happy life thing. I'm like, your generation of men just let that fly. Like, we're (laughs) we're trying to say that our happiness actually matters a little bit, too. So then he laughs, and he's like... That's when he starts to go into his story of, you know, if I'm going to be honest with you, when I was happiest in my relationship was when I was cheating. So I'm like, wait, what? This is, you're serious. I thought he was joking at first. He's like, nah, man, I'm really serious. And I think you should talk about it because I think a lot of men would actually feel this way, but they'd never say it. They're terrified to say it. But I know plenty of men who feel like me. That were happier, happiest in their marriage when they had a side piece. 100%. Okay, is there any dude listening willing to go on the voice disguiser and confirm that you were a better husband when you were cheating? No, he didn't say he was a better husband. He he does say that. He, he says he's better. He was. It's one thing to be happier in your relationship. It's another thing to think you're a better husband. So he said both. Okay. So, so once he so because I was interested and I asked him to break this down to me. What he said was in the beginning of their relationship, it was it was normal. After they got married, he got bored. He got he got complacent. He just it just wasn't the same for him. When he had a woman, another woman that he could go to and express himself and have whatever situation they were having, feel wanted, right, desired, mm-hmm. wanted, all of the things. It just made him a happier person, which in turn made him a better husband. He was nicer to his wife. I know this sounds crazy, but this is what he's telling me. He was a better man. He was more patient. He was all of these things. And he never wanted her to know that he was cheating. But eventually she found out. And when she found out, he stopped. And he couldn't, He just wasn't the same person. What a when, quitter. He, was, <laughs> <laughs> he gave up on it. And he, he was like miserable in his marriage. He just wasn't. The same person, and he was trying, he was going to therapy. He said he was trying to find a way to be that same guy, but he just couldn't do it. So he started cheating again, and he didn't tell his wife, and then he realized he was happy again. And his marriage was like the best it had ever been in the times that he was cheating. So once she kind of put two and two together, like, Mm. are you cheating on me again? You're too happy. Exactly. (laughs) He got to the, he was like, I didn't really want to hide it anymore. And he thought, that she would react to it with like, well, if this is what you got to do to be happy, then do what you got to do. I just don't want it. I don't want to know about it. Mm-hmm. She said that at first, but then after a while, she couldn't do it anymore. And she was like, I'm done with this. And then he was like, well, I think I have to leave because he genuinely felt like a, a little bit of cheating was making his marriage mm-hmm. better for him and his wife. All right. So let me ask a question to two people then. I, we're looking for a dude to go on the voice disguise or say, yeah, I was a better husband. And I was happier when I was cheating. Uh, one eight five five Burcho. And then I think we should look for the woman that said, 
he was a better man, a better father, and a better husband to me when he had a side piece. So I allowed it to happen. You found your woman. One eight five five Berkshire. She's here already. Yep. All right. We'll call her Jessica, and she is on the voice disguiser. Hey, Jessica. Hi. Good morning. Okay, so he was a better man when he had himself a side piece. So yeah, um, I know you guys have talked about like situationships before and stuff like that, um, but I have been in a situationship and he's like we call it a situationship, but like we live together and he goes and does his thing every once in a while and then it works out. <laughs> Everybody's happy and it just is how it is. I don't do anything, but he does, and that's just how how our relationship has worked. How did this deal get struck? Um, so a long time ago, um, we were official and then it just was one of those things where like you're constantly arguing, constantly bickering and I learned some things about him and it, once I knew and knew that he was still coming home to me, it was just one of those things that it just works. It's not all the time. It's every once in a while. Um, but I mean, and then, you know, we'll go some years where it's none at all. So it just kind of depends. <laughs> Does he sort of let you know when that is happening or you just can feel it? Um, both. Before it was, I could feel it. Now it's kind of, if it happens, but it hasn't happened in a really long time here lately. So it's just been one of the, it just works. And you don't feel like you take any shots at your self-esteem because he's good to you and this is just physical with somebody else. Yeah, and the generation we live, or the, the day and age we live in, I mean, at least from where I'm from, no one's faithful. It's I would rather know than not know, if that makes sense. And where I'm at in my life, I'm focused on my career, and that's just how it works. So, so long as it's physical with somebody else and he doesn't get emotional or tied to her, then it's okay? Yeah, he is one of those that can shut it off. Um, so it is like, you know. Doing the dirty is just doing the dirty, and that's it. Yeah. It's nothing more. Hey, okay, if it works so, for you, works for you. Are you ever concerned he might catch feelings for from one of his escapades? Um, that definitely has crossed my mind. Um, and it's one of those things that I've also we've also sat down and been like, all right, if you do, like, just tell me, because we'll end it and we'll move about our ways, and we'll go our separate ways and make it work. So I'm curious if you came to him with the same deal and mm -hmm. said, hey, you know um, what? I think I'd be happier too, so I'm going to try this from time to time. What's his reaction going to be? His reaction is he wouldn't like it, but he couldn't be mad at me for it, if that makes sense. Okay. It does. All right. Mm -hmm. I appreciate your honesty. Thank you for calling. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, man, whatever works for you. Mm -hmm. That would not work for me. <laughs> 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 uh, good morning, Oh, hold on a second. My bad. Am I going to three or two, Tommy? Either one. Tim, what's going on? Hey, how y'all doing? Good. How are you? Uh, I'm okay. You got me on the voice disguise, right? Sure yes, do. Sir. <laughs> Heck yeah. <laughs> Double voice disguise. <laughs> <laughs> You're up? talking like Alvin the Chipmunk right now, man. <laughs> <laughs> what's up, my dude? Uh, I was have been married, still married, 30 years. And there was a period for about nine years where... I uh, was cheating on my wife, and I was much better as a husband and much better as a father uh, when it was going on. Why do you think that is? Like, can you get to the bottom because of what made... Made... Go ahead. Yeah, I eventually understood that there was a, a period where we, where we had kids and work pressure and you know, building a family and all these things were going on. And there was always a lot of pressure. When I was in a situation where I was dealing with the outside person, there was no pressure. You could function freely. You could speak freely. You didn't have to be concerned about the, you know, about everything. There wasn't all this weight on your shoulders. So you could, when you could have a, a place to go and release all that stuff, you could go and let it all go. And when I, when I went home, I was able to pay more attention to my wife because I didn't feel pressured by everything. I was able to be better to my kids because you didn't feel like you had to be on, on, on eggshells all the time. You didn't have to be the very best version of yourself because nobody can be the best version of themselves all the time. Mm -hmm. And you didn't have to be that. And after a while, you get to a point where, I hate to call it a phase, but for me, I think that's what it was. You kind of grow through it. And you look around every day, and one day I sat down with 
to jump off and I told her, hey, you know, this has been great, but I think I need to move. I think I need to, to get back reinvested in, in where I was before. She was like, you know, at some point in time we knew it was going to come. You do the thing one more time, you dab it up because it was great, and then you get on down the road. <laughs> so you stopped because you wanted to? You didn't You didn't eventually get caught? No, no, no. I didn't didn't get caught. I, you just kind of grow through the front. You grow the way you ease into that kind of thing. For me, you ease into it. It's not something you purposely get into. You just kind of slide into it, and, and you're cognitive of what's going on, and you get to a point where, like all phases, you kind of, it kind of passes, and you, you you understand and you learn why. For me, I learned why, and I understood why. And no therapy, no, you know, I kept my secret. She kept the secret. The one or two other people who, who knew never said anything. And we moved on, and it's been, you know, seven or eight years since then. And like I said, because I understood how I got there, you know, you kind of grow out of it. And, you know, and I was better during it. And I'm significantly better afterwards. Tim, man, I mean, you're married with kids. Where did you find the energy to cheat? <laughs> I'm just too tired to do all that. The Burt Show.